Suppose you change the organization of production. No longer a small group in charge. No masters, no lords, no employers. You say that in every production unit, every enterprise, whether it's a factory or an office or a store, it doesn't matter, in any collection, in any community of human beings producing a good or service, it has to be organized democratically. Just think, what an idea. One person, one vote. Whether you're a supervisor or a machine operator or a service provider or a sweeper upper at the end of the day, one person, one vote. You together, by majority vote, decide what this enterprise is going to produce, what technology it's going to use, where this is all going to happen. And here comes the big one. What's to be done with the output, with the profit, with the revenue, whatever you call it? I don't think in a minute, if this were done democratically, you would ever see five people being given spectacular pay packages while everybody else can't put their kid through college without accumulating debts they can never repay. Some people have 15 yachts and other people are food insecure, the modern euphemism for hunger. No, if it were democratically done, you'd have a fantastically different commitment to less inequality. You wouldn't see the inequality we have because you wouldn't anymore have a minority in a position to accumulate it because they wouldn't be in the power position that they have been in slavery, in feudalism, and capitalism. The democratization of the enterprise, the democratization of the workplace, that's a structural break from the past. And only with that kind of a break do we have a chance to undo the inequality reproduced systematically by slavery, by feudalism, and in our era, by capitalism. Here's the bottom line, and I tell it with a story. If you want to have social conflict, tension, and difficulty, then you give some people a, a great deal and everybody else way less. It's a recipe for tension, conflict, difficulty, and disorder. You want a society in which each of us can develop our talents, follow our passions, contribute to society, and be taken care of then don't allow that kind of inequality. And the way you do that is not merely moral preaching, however useful that may be. You've got to take the structural steps. And economically, we know how to do that. Democratize the enterprise. Make it a general discussion and a general democratic decision. Sure, some people will get paid more than others, but we will never have the kinds of centuries-long gross inequality that I described to you at the beginning of today's program. Overcoming inequality is a systemic problem. Capitalism is the obstacle that we need to overcome to get to the kinds of levels of equality rather than inequality that most Americans have shown us over and over, like most people around the world, is what they would prefer.